this Prince of Peace in light of mercy confess our sin lay our burdens at Jesus feet and with gladness Christmas. If you would stand, we're going to sing a lot tonight. Some of you have a chance to sing just sitting in your seat. Some, I'll ask you to stand and sing with us. Real quickly, if you didn't get a candle yet, make sure you run back and get a candle or send somebody else to run back and get a candle. We're going to do our best to worship the Lord as we focus in on his coming, the fact that he came for you and he came for me. We're going to celebrate that story. We're going to do our best to celebrate well. So join us as we sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding Sorrows grow, no thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. With truth and grace And makes the nations prove The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, wonders of His love Luke chapter 2 says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Snow well, the 
was to start and for shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so Verse 8 of Luke chapter 2 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Holy for the broken. 
came Jesus you came for the world for the hurting for the lost for the lonely you came Jesus you came as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord has made known unto us and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Oh, oh, oh. 
like a storm, light is breaking in a stable for a throne, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Unto us a child is born. King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. Christmas, and uh, we're so happy that you're here tonight, that you took just a few minutes on this Christmas Eve to come and gather together and celebrate what this is all about anyway. And if you've been here at Morningstar over the last several weeks, you know that it's not just about a baby in a manger, it's about a Savior. And singing some of these Christmas carols, what I love is there's so much truth in these songs that we sing. Some of them are very, very old, and yet they ring just as true today as they did when they were written. And one of the last songs that we're going to sing tonight is a very familiar Christmas carol that, that you heard, you've sung, Silent Night. It's amazing. This song was actually written in 1818 by a young man named Joseph Moore. And he wrote it, and he wanted to perform it on Christmas Eve that year, and he wanted to have it. It was actually written to be performed on an organ. <laughs> but the church had flooded, and the organ was broke. So he went to another friend of his, and he said, hey, can you write a guitar accompaniment for this song so we can sing it on Christmas Eve. And so the very first time that song was sang, it was to an acoustic guitar accompaniment. Very simple. And I think it fitted the song perfectly. It wasn't long before that song spread all through Europe and made it to Britain. And then finally, about 1839 was the first time it was sung in America, in New York City, as a matter of fact. And it became an instant hit. Everyone was singing Silent Night. It was great. And if you look at the, the most popular singles ever recorded in the world, Silent Night is number four of all time. 
not, not just of Christian songs or Christmas songs, of all time, the number four best single of all time is Silent Night, sung by Bing Crosby. It's amazing. It's timeless. Not only timeless, but it carries a truth with it, and we're going to sing it here in just a minute, but Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm and all is bright. What I love is one of the stanzas, at the end of the stanza, it says, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Amen. He didn't become God. Yeah. He didn't grow up to be God. It wasn't that God said, hey, that's a good kid one day. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to put my spirit upon him. He was God, very God. He was Emmanuel at birth. Yeah. And that does something. It changes. It's, it's what brings us hope. It's what gives us our joy. War, World War I started in 1914, in fact, the summer of 1914, between a lot of the European powers at the time, and they actually thought that the war would be over by Christmas time of 1914. But by the time December rolled around of 1914, hundreds of thousands of men had already died. Bloody, crazy. And at this time, by December, there was a line, the front extended all the way from Switzerland and went all the way to the North Sea. And they were separated. They called it trench warfare at the time. And there were some places that the enemy was only separated by about 90 feet, 30 yards at the most. And there was just super bloody. I mean, in fact, in between the two lines, they called it no man's land at 90 feet. And there were just dead bodies everywhere. And at this time, it had become so stalemate that nobody was doing anything, and the trenches were flooded, and by December, the snow had fallen, the ice had fallen, and it was freezing cold, and the shells, artillery was still going, the rifles were still going off. The Britons were still firing. In fact, Great Britain controlled about 27 miles of that line through Belgium. And on Christmas Eve of 1914, at a small town in outside of Belgium, uh, in, in a small town in Belgium, the Britons were firing and firing and firing, and then they paused long enough to hear, and what they heard was the German soldiers in their trenches singing Silent Night. Now, the Britons didn't understand German, but they understood the melody, and something started happening all across that line, extending from the North Sea down to Switzerland. See, the Germans started singing this one, outside this one little town, Silent Night, and then after they got done singing Silent Night, the, the British started singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, in English. A song that the Germans knew, but they only knew it in German and Latin. So at the same time the Britons were singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, the Germans started singing it in their native tongue and in Latin, Adeste Fidelis. They started singing these carols together. And then one by one, soldiers started coming out of the trenches. And they started meeting in no man's land. And you read the stories of these soldiers who wrote these letters home, and at first they were hesitant, like, was it a trap? What is it, a trick? But as they started coming out, this Christmas miracle took place. Because at that time, there were believers on both sides of those trenches. And they were fighting a war because their country sent them to war, but the men themselves, there were believers on both sides. And that night, as they were singing Christmas carols, and it brought them out to me in the same place they were there, just killing one another. And what happened is they started shaking hands and hugging and taking pictures together, sharing stories from back home. Games of soccer started to break out between the Germans and the Britons. They started sharing meals together, and this lasted longer than just Christmas Eve. It carried over for a few days. Christ changes things. Jesus changes things. You can't, you can't meet the Savior and leave unchanged. And even in the middle of a, in the middle of a bloody, bloody war that just had started, there were people who were impacted because of songs that they knew that sang of the truth of this Savior. And something united them more than divided them on that night. And it was a love of a Savior. Yes, the war stretched on for many, many more years, but you know what had to happen? Those men along that line, a lot of them refused to fight each other again. They had to swap out all of their soldiers and bring new ones in because they refused to fight the ones that they were just united with under this banner of Christ. You say, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. 
once again, Jesus changes you. He offers this free gift of eternal life. This offer that the war with God can be over. That we don't have to run a fear of death or hell or the grave because we can have not only eternal life, but a new life in Christ. And on this Christmas Eve, as we get ready to sing this last song, some of the men are going to come forward right now. They're going to light some candles for you. And I want you to spread those around and light the person next to you, their candle. And why do we light candles? We light candles because we celebrate the light of the world that has come into this world. Jesus Christ. He came to bring light and to bring life to all men. And my hope tonight is that everyone here tonight, that it's more than just about the presence and about the food and about the family, that it's about a Savior. That it's not even about a baby. It's about the Savior of the world. And as we light this light, and we're going to stand here in just a moment, and we're going to sing Silent Night together, and we're going to finish out with this song tonight. And I just want you to think about the light that you're holding in your hand. That it represents, it's an illustration of the light of Christ that as a believer, if you're a believer here tonight, lives in you. Emmanuel, Christ, God with us. And it's more than just a light. That you and I have the responsibility to take this very light and share it. We're not supposed to hold it. We're not supposed to hide it. We're supposed to live it. Because if Christ lives in us, we can't help but share this light of the world, this amazing Savior. And we celebrate this time of year the fact that he was born, but that's not it. It's he's a Savior. And he changes everything. Silent night. Holy night. Because Jesus was Lord at his birth. Will you stand with us tonight and sing?
God, Lord, we praise you in this place because you are good, because you are the Savior of the world. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done for us, that you stepped down from your heavenly throne and came to earth as a baby, but not just as a baby, as the answer to our problem, as the Savior of the world, as the hope for our brokenness. Jesus, we praise you. And in the craziness that Christmas can bring, we stop. We stop just to make sure that we refocus and don't forget what this is really all about. It's all about you. Lord, for the one that doesn't know you here today, that is still at war with you, that is still experiencing the chain and brokenness of sin, or give them the courage to talk to somebody today that they'd be able to have the opportunity to meet you and know you as Savior, not just as a baby, but as the Savior of their life. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. Merry Christmas.